So you remember in the last video when I made this, and in the video previous to that where I made this. Okay, great, you're all cut up. Uh, so let's get back in automation today because I've got another idea from my wife because she actually has great ideas uh, and that horse carriage thing was an awesome idea. So I figured this time I would kind of blend our two ideas together. What I'm going to be doing is making a Barbie car except it's going to be a track weapon underneath and you can guess which side my idea is in that. So I'm going to go ahead and warn you right away that this is not going to be realistic to an early 80s Corvette in the slightest. By track weapon, I mean I am going to redo everything for my own purposes, as though we were in the 80s just for fun to add a bit of a spin to it. Uh, it's not going to be realistic, it's not going to be even close to realistic. Before you comment, Corvettes didn't have double wishbones, remember what I just said. Hold it in your mind for the duration of this video, please. <laughs> oh yeah, before we go too far, I just want to mention again, and I'll be mentioning it every single second of your waking minutes of life, uh, that Bugo stickers are now a thing. Check them out on my website here. They're awesome. I still have a bunch of them, so go and check them out. I had the privilege of mailing like 14 orders this past weekend, which was awesome. So thank you to everybody who bought one already and all of the ones previous to that. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, people have been getting them all over the world, and uh, it's great to see pictures of them in different places. <laughs> anyway, back to the video. So this is the body I've selected for this. Now the proportions on it don't look right immediately. Uh, we will fix that, don't worry, especially back here. I have no idea what the heck's going on. That looks like a copyright avoidance bump, uh, if I've ever seen one. Um, but it is going to be a Corvette, kind of. Corvette shape, Barbie car outside, track weapon inside. So let's go. I'm gonna go with a steel body uh, with a monocoque chassis, and we'll go for a steel chassis just because it's cheap uh, GM products, am I right? <laughs> okay, front longitudinal engine, uh, and yeah, it's double wishbone front, double wishbone rear, and that's because that offers the most flexibility in terms of raising and lowering the car from my experience in this game. I want to be able to make it low and, uh, well, decent looking, uh, other than the fact that it's going to be pink. Now earlier today, when I was kind of dreaming this idea up, uh, kind of advancing off my wife's idea of the Barbie car, I was thinking about doing something that I've dreamed of for a long time, which is swapping a Corvette with a <laughs> Infiniti G35 engine, the uh, VQ35, uh, which would have been a bit of blasphemy, I think, but it would have been fun. Either way, uh, we'll just go for a 90 degree V8, just try and keep it basic, and the most basic thing we can get would be this sort of setup here. Now I do need to pick a displacement, it's currently 4 liters. Uh, let's make it 5.7. No particular reason. High stroke means it's going to be pretty rough to get up into the uh, high RPMs, which is fine because push rod isn't good at that anyways. Uh, so I think we'll be fine with a really high uh, stroke engine. 5.69 cc's. That's 5.7 liters. So in terms of power numbers, I'd really like to hit 300 horsepower. This is the 80s. 300 horsepower is a lot of power. Uh, I mean, if we can get more than that, then that'd be great, but I'm gonna go for forged materials. I think um, we could go flat plane, but I think people might get mad. <laughs> uh, so we'll just go for a regular forged steel and uh, forged internals here as well. Hopefully that can get us up to that power. Compression and stuff we can come back to later. No turbos, not gonna have to worry about that. And the big question, something I've always had trouble with sometimes in this game is, do we go carburetor or do we go injection? We can only get EFI on this. Uh, but if we had a performance intake, it doesn't look too bad. Like, <laughs> that looks like you could get some speed out of it. Premium fuel, and uh, we'll come back to that. Let's go long tubular headers. We'll try to avoid race unless we need to, and they'll be dual. <laughs> and uh, let's go maybe for a cat. Try and be semi-realistic. All right, so the engine's hitting me with the old uh, valve float and knocking, which is always nice to see. Uh, so I'm just gonna lower the compression. It was worse, I raised the fuel mixture quite significantly. Um, so our fuel economy sucks, but that's uh, to be expected, let's be real. 270 horsepower though, that's decent. Um, and that is actually a decent torque curve as well. <laughs> that's not too bad. It really is dead down here, but kind of in the mid-range, that's a lot of torque. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of glad to see that. So keeping everything happy, we need to stick with a 5100 RPM limit. And uh, let's see if there's anything restrictive. Our exhaust, mildly restrictive. 
immediately we can get a bit more power, 274, not bad. Now with these naturally aspirated engines, it's always tempting to just up the cam profile and then just be happy with it. Like I could probably get 300 horsepower pretty easy just doing this or close to it. There's three or 295 one there, uh, but that puts us way up into the RPMs and it cuts the torque down low, which is not what we want to do. So that's why I'm reeling it back just a little bit. 280 now and I think I'm gonna have to lower compression just a little bit more um, If we can get a bit more ignition timing in it, we might be able to get more power You know what? I think I'm gonna settle right here 287 horsepower 457 newton meters at 3500 rpm nice low rpm limit decent amount of torque in the mid-range kind of a dead power curve at the start but it doesn't have to rev very high to get to the power 287 isn't too bad it's not quite the goal that i wanted but i don't want to go into the quality sliders and stuff with this car so that's gonna do it on to the engine aesthetics uh so we can actually paint the block <laughs> which is fun um and yeah we could paint it bright pink because of course we could however i think on the inside we'll go for some mild subtlety and the outside is where things get interesting <laughs> All right, there you have it, the um, <laughs> the Barbie-powered engine. Uh, a decent amount of power. We should be able to do something nice with that in the car. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> On to the next bits. Okay, so the body is obviously disfigured, uh, and so I need to shape it into a better, better form. Okay, something just happened and the wheels fell off. Uh, I've never seen that glitch before, but I'm gonna hope that it'll come back eventually. For now, though, I really want to shrink the back end. It just feels like it's too long. And then <laughs> we'll see what else we can do. Like a big part of this for me is making it look very stock. I just kind of feel like that's the best way to do it. All right, on to the color. And now this is extremely important just because of the nature of this vehicle. Uh, I feel like it needs to be kind of like a, a, a pink, but not a matte pink, just sort of like a, a mildly dull pink. I, I don't know why, it just feels like that's the right way to go. I was thinking about doing something really bright like this, um, but then, I mean, there are just so many options. So many different pinks to go with, but this one just seems to be the best call. And there is a good thing about this as well, we need white trim literally everywhere. And yes, that includes the convertible top, which I'm going to make out of leather, and uh, I'm going to make it white, <laughs> just because, you know what, It's it's got to be white, that's just thematic. The wheel color doesn't want to stay, but other than that, uh, I think we're, I think we're set. Okay, fixtures. Um, this is extremely important. This is kind of where I decide if I want to make it actually look like a Corvette, or if I'm just going to do my own sort of design. I think it's going to be a combo of both. We might pull some design ideas from the Corvette, but I'm just going to kind of work things over myself. <laughs> we'll see how well that goes. You know, I was just thinking, and I'm wondering now if even mentioning what this is supposed to be is a bad idea because of the YouTube kids thing. Um, if this video ends up being demonetized because the YouTube algorithm thinks it's for kids, then yeah, whoops, not my intention. So I've got the back kind of mostly done. Obviously we still need to add a plate and uh, it's gotta be California. Let me see if I can find a good one. Oh yeah, did you know that there's a plate that has my name on it in this game? Uh, yeah. The Yugoslavian civilian plate is indeed uh, branded by me. <laughs> I really like this. I haven't used it yet, um, but yeah, there you go. Download this, this pack from the workshop. Okay, after a bit of digging, I found that this body, it it's not really a, a 1980 Corvette, because a 1980 Corvette is the previous like uh, body style, which I like quite a bit more than this one. Um, this one more lines up with the next generation after that, which... Uh, <laughs> Um, these lights do not match with at all, um, but you know what, I'm just gonna have to say that's too bad and we'll work through it anyways. I have some ideas though, including copying the trim from the 1990 version that go all the way around the body. I think that'll be kind of fun. And then the plate needs to kind of go up here uh, if I want to sort of match that style. Okay, so thankfully the trim isn't being too difficult. Uh, it is fighting me every step of the way like trim does, but uh, it's not too bad because there's a line across the entire body that already kind of corresponds with it and having those pieces there just make it look way better so I think it's worth the effort and I was planning on doing an interior for this car as well so uh, yeah hopefully we get to that <laughs> we'll see how much time I have left 
You know, if I keep stealing these ideas from my wife, okay, maybe not, maybe stealing is not the right word. She is voluntarily offering these ideas to me. Um, she hasn't been on the channel for a long time, so I want to do something. Um, she's not really sure if people would actually want to listen to her voice. If you want to watch videos with her in them, there are two streams, I think, in the past where she was involved. Um, one of them being the really interesting dog car, <laughs> uh, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, but if you want to see her in the video, please like this video right now, and I will show her the like thing and then be like, hey, this, this amount of people, however many, like three, four hundred, whatever it ends up being, actually really want to see you in a video <laughs> or hear you in a video. And uh, yeah, it might be some encouragement. Okay, so the trim gets really janky up at the front. I will work on that a little bit. I'll try and straighten it up a bit. It looks awkward <laughs> and that's because it is awkward. It's, uh, you know what, actually right there, it's, it's a lot better. Just align it with the, um, the uh, curvature of the body and we should be set. However, <laughs> I, I think I can do better. Okay, so there have to be some Corvette wheels in here somewhere. I swear I've seen them many times before, but if I can't find them now, I won't be too surprised. <laughs> That's just kind of how things go sometimes. Okay, I just noticed this game has 370Z rims and I n never even considered them for some of my builds. How is that possible? <laughs> Man. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go with these uh, just because I like the look of them. I think they're close enough to that kind of period correct size uh, that we should be fine. Um, and I do want to lower this Corvette just just a little bit, not too much because we, we want to keep it stealthy, but just a little bit of lowering should not nail it. It should be perfect after that. Yes, I know the fuel cap isn't supposed to be on this side. It's fine, <laughs> we'll just leave it. Okay, so some time has passed. I am now about uh, 20 minutes older than I was the last time I was speaking, and the front end is kind of done-ish. Um, you can see that it has pop-ups. They're embedded into the car and not quite properly angled because it's really difficult to get them to be angled right. <laughs> I've been having a lot of trouble with that, but yeah, pop-ups are inlaid, the front lights are done, and it looks like a car now, kind of. Um, it's It's got most of the things that you need to be a car. I put my own badge on it, which may have been a mistake, but yeah, we'll just kind of leave that there for now. <laughs> and I think I may as well get onto the interior bits. And then is that gonna be it? <laughs> we'll have to try this thing out in BeamNG, obviously. If it's gonna be a track weapon, it needs to be taken to the track, but not quite yet. Okay, so obviously the interior is gonna be white. Uh, <laughs> I've just made the center console white. And I'm already afraid. Um, that is <laughs> terrible, but uh, don't think about it too much. Um, I'm gonna go on to seats. It's probably gonna have something like this. I don't know. <laughs> we'll just make them white. That's all I care about. All right, the car now has seats and they are in fact the same leather texture as the convertible top, which is cool. Uh, <laughs> we still got some more stuff to put in. Let's put a shifter, although this thing is gonna be auto, so uh, maybe something like this. And so, after around an hour of labor, the Barbie-esque thing is finished. <laughs> it's not really that special, it's just very bland. Um, but it is vibrantly pink, so I guess that's something. Uh, let's move on to the drivetrain. Alright, so the car is going to be rear-wheel drive. I'm gonna give it an automatic. Uh, we'll make it a four-speed and uh, we'll come back and adjust all this stuff, but it seems like it's actually gonna be pretty quick. Um, in terms of the diff, I really want to make it open, but just for the sake of it being more drivable, let's go geared LSD. I think we're gonna need it. Semi-slick tires because otherwise it'll fly away. 255s in the back. We'll stick to the small stuff on the front. 16-inch rim seems fine and we'll uh, again come back to this. Vented discs all around, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and in the name of it being a track weapon, let's do a fully clad under tray. Uh, it has no arrow, so we're not gonna be able to get anything out of this, um, but it, it'll be at least something. It's gonna be an auto soft top, two seats, and uh, very luxurious and a premium 8-track. <laughs> I guess that's where we're at. Oh wow, we are killing it in the convertible sport category. I'm very impressed with that, actually. Uh, wow, 77.9%. Apparently I actually made a car that's decent, and it falls within the lines immediately. Would you look at that? I'm going somewhere, boys. Uh, the Corvette is actually reasonable. <laughs> 
Is this a first? Okay, back over to the drivetrain. We're sitting pretty at 274. Uh, and it seems like we can get a bit more than that. 293 seems to be somewhere around our max speed. Dang, that's pretty quick. No wheel spin issues at all, which is shocking. I'm, uh, I'm very thoroughly impressed, actually. Okay, I'm gonna quicken up the gears a little bit. First gear was going up to like 100 kilometers an hour before. That's a little bit too quick. I mean, the, the first gear on my Tiburon, as an example, pretty much maxes out at like 30. You can't go faster than that. It has incredibly short gears. All right, so we do have a little bit of wheel spin, 3.4% of all of it in first gear. That's not bad. I wanna keep it uh, so the spacing is pretty high. Maybe not that high actually, just like 70. I just felt like 50 was a little bit too low. Um, I just wanna make it a little bit more responsive off the line so it's not a total dog. Uh, when we try and go around a track that actually has corners, we'll see how that goes. Suspension tuning has never been my forte in this game or any game ever, so uh, yeah, bear with me on that one. So it does have wider rears than fronts, and I've done that on purpose because I find that the look of it is better, uh, but this does increase our sportiness quite significantly to have uh, them pretty closely matched. So I think that's what I'm going to go for. Um, That'll just make it easier for us here. Well, I've done it 100% sportiness, and all I had to do was lower down the size of the wheels themselves, uh, like the diameter of the tires. Not bad. Uh, not bad at all. Very impressed. Okay, the brakes are weak as heck. Um, let's make them bigger. Bigger means less brake fade. Uh, bigger means more expensive. But yeah, this should work out better for us. Uh, so we do make uplift at 293 kilometers an hour. Although I don't think we're going to get up to that, so I'm kind of fine with it. We should be okay. Um, <laughs> we'll see. I don't exactly have a track in mind, but I think uh, we'll probably take on the automation test track and maybe another one or two uh, just to see how things go. <laughs> and the rear brake force is apparently pretty high. I guess I can shrink these down just a little bit. Alright, we're just out of the line there into oversteer, which makes sense because this is a, uh, a rear wheel drive car, so obviously it's going to oversteer slightly. But in terms of the suspension, I haven't set a preset yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit race, and actually I'm going to go ahead and hit sport. Let's not go full race just yet. Maybe that's a mistake. However, we do have some options, including slammed, ooh yes, uh, that is always my go-to. Hey, it's easier to get in and out of, right? That's uh, that's reliability, practicality, all that good stuff. <laughs> all right, let's make it a race car. All right, drivability is a little bit low, but sportiness, beautiful. And I think that's gonna be that. The Barbie, please don't sue, is ready to be shown off in BeamNG Drive. Let's see how it does. Uh, I think it's gonna be decent. It's kind of heavy, 1,561 kilos. Uh, but it is solid steel, and this is the 80s, so can't think too much about that. Um, yeah, you know what? I think this one's going to be decent. I'm excited. I'm hopeful. Maybe it'll drive forwards this time. That would be great. <laughs> That'd be a good start. <laughs> you know, sometimes that doesn't happen, so yeah, let's go. All right, everyone, so we are here in this car's natural habitat, which is right by a giant bridge, the water, the beach, and uh, yeah, some lavish shopping districts, I guess. I mean, there's some higher end stores over there, towers and stuff. Uh, yeah, the best that the West Coast map has to offer for us. And I am pleased to tell you on my journey to put this car in this position, uh, it was rocking it. This thing is pretty darn sweet. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I think it turned out decent, um, mostly because it's low and wide, and um, <laughs> it's got some decent suspension for a rear-wheel rear drive car, which is kind of unusual for me. Uh, generally in showcases, I'm kind of notorious for being a bad driver, specifically with badly tuned rear-wheel drive cars. I tend to mess them up quite a bit and have a lot of trouble with them around corners and stuff. This car probably isn't going to be the exception of that rule, but it is one of the better ones that I've driven uh, just in the short time I've been driving it. Um, <laughs> that being said, it's not perfect, so it still will make for some interesting driving. 
Uh, yeah. So let's drive around town for a little bit and then we'll head on over to a track. So the car actually accelerates pretty decently, which is good. Um, it's got an auto, I know. It's not an ideal situation for a race car. Maybe a drag car would be better. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly supposed to be a drag car. Here we are at the mall, by the way, because... Of course, the, the mall is where we need to be. Where's the cosmetics section? But stereotypes aside, let's, uh, I don't know, <laughs> drive on the highway maybe? I haven't got this thing up to any speed yet. And this thing's probably a little bit dangerous for somebody who isn't too experienced with uh, rear wheel drive beasts like this. I mean, I did take a pretty decent crash there and it still drives straight, so I'm moderately impressed by that. <laughs> Uh, oh, the racetrack is over here. You know what? Let's blow this stop sign and get on in there. <laughs> or right here. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> well, I tried. This is supposed to be a jump. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about this new sort of industrial area around here. Uh, I haven't been on this map too, too much recently. However, the track is right here, so <laughs> let's jump on. We're pretty close to the drag strip, we may as well take it for a pass, just for fun. Maybe up against something a little bit more dangerous, perhaps. Something that maybe, maybe has 4,500 horsepower. <laughs> oh yes, this is the battle of the ages. <laughs> I don't think that this is going to go well for me, uh, if I'm fairly honest with you. Oh my goodness, that thing is gone. Holy, it's fast. I just want to see what kind of time the AI can get with it. Just for your curiosity and mine, let's see. Uh, 7.1. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is ridiculously quick. I think the fastest drag car I've ever done in this game was 6.5. So that's cutting it close. Man, oh man. I need to take that thing out for another rip. Alright, so here I am in a scenario. This is the Hirochi Raceway, uh, the short circuit, and I'm going to attempt to do two laps in this car, see how well it goes. Um, somewhat well, hopefully. I'm trying to spend a little bit more time in BeamNG this time testing, because it seems like the last couple videos have only been in here for like two, three minutes, because the cars just kind of explode. But uh, yeah, let's give it, let's give it the juice and see how it does. Now, I mean, starting with a burnout maybe isn't the best idea. I'm using a controller for this, by the way. I don't have my wheel out. It's plugged in, uh, but it is over in the corner. <laughs> I'm a little bit too lazy to pull it out for this. I'm kind of running short on time these days. Uh, you might be able to tell. But coming around these sections, not too, too bad. Double wishbone on all the corners, which was a purposeful choice in order to make it drive better because I didn't want to do solid axles. Uh, so, yeah, not too bad. Okay, apparently I forgot that you have to brake for corners sometimes, and uh, I didn't brake at all for that corner. Uh, who would have thought? <laughs> Pro racing driver makes mistakes. Professional idiot. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a bit strong. You know, I'm not a professional racing driver. I am a professional... Uh, well, I work in the construction industry. <laughs> that's what I do. This is my hobby. One of, the, uh, one, one of the many hobbies that I have. You know, I used to be super into RC cars. If you guys want to talk about that kind of stuff, I'm definitely still down. <laughs> I gotta get mine out, actually. That's one of my more long-term projects. But we're coming up to the end of this lap. Minute 20, not a flying lap. Uh, we can definitely do better this time. Short circuit is good because, again, it's a short circuit, so <laughs> it means these laps are nice and quick, easy for practice, and I'm thinking I'll probably end up doing this again. Onto the grass, if we were taking penalties, we would have got one right there. Not a big deal. Um, <laughs> again, I gotta be more firm on the brakes and uh, actually take the driving line. Although, again, I'm way out of experience. I've been driving in Need for Speed for the past couple of weeks, okay? It's a completely different physics thing I'm trying to get used to here. You know, it's been a long time since the last showcase, and we do have some stuff in the works. Don't worry, we will be coming up with some cool stuff soon. And I also have in the works, although very early in the works, uh, a event planned for all of my recent creations, or at least a few of them. Um, I'll be announcing that hopefully in the next month or two. I can't put a deadline on it because time is very much of the essence. But here we are, we're doing much, much better. Six seconds, and that's a, well, 118. But it gives us a total time of 243, 
and I want to try that again. Alright, second attempt. This time I'm not going for speed, I'm going for cleanliness. Uh, so we're taking a bath and attempting to do this course as clean as I can, not touching the grass at all. Uh, this car is from Malibu, okay? It will never touch grass ever. That is just part of the deal. Mall parking lots and dad's garage, that's literally it. Oh, this corner every single time. <laughs> oh man, I gotta get better at that corner specifically. I, it just sneaks up on me every single time I mess it up. <laughs> you know, you'd think I'd learn, but uh, here we are. Okay, one thing I am pretty impressed with this car with is I can hammer the throttle and have no issues. It doesn't have traction control, it doesn't have an ESC, it just has decent tires and a decent like gearing setup so that it doesn't bust the wheels off every time it accelerates, uh, which is nice. My goodness, that's a good change. Okay, and that was a lot cleaner that time, except for the one corner that I messed up on that is much better, and a 121, not terrible. Could be worse, could be better. <laughs> That's kind of a generic thing to say, oh no. <laughs> okay, so this time again, focusing on cleanliness, trying to take a bath properly, not going to go on the grass, actually going to stop for that one corner, forgot where it is, next essential dread. There's that corner right there, hard on the brakes, far too hard because I locked them up. Uh, again, no ABS, <laughs> so let's just hope for the best around the rest of the track that I can make up for that lost time. I forgot what the total time was last time, I think it was like 2.43. Uh, so if I can do better than that, then I'd consider it to be an improvement. Just in a general sense. <laughs> oh, that's not clean. That's really not clean at all. Okay, um, off on the sand. <laughs> that's gonna knock the nap lap time a little bit. Turbo Burger's kind of tempting me on the billboard, and we're gonna hopefully bring it home here in less than 118. <laughs> after I downshift by accident because I'm used to need for speed. Uh, 117, yeah. Okay, so uh, that was five seconds faster. Not terrible. <laughs> Still could be better though, my goodness. Well, that's gonna be it for the Barbie car for now. Uh, I think this one's definitely gonna have to come back at some point. The last three builds, uh, I'm including this one in the last three, uh, all seem to have some kind of glaring design flaw that needs to be fixed. Um, I mean, this one's isn't major, it's just, it seems to be a little bit, I don't know, it, it's just very average, I think I can do better, oh. <laughs> but, uh, oh geez, as I attempt to drift around that corner, um, I'm thinking the other two builds are gonna have to come back at some point, specifically the high power one next, because I really feel like I can do better, and yes, by the way, there is a, just a random hole in the side of this, I don't know what's causing that, I suspect that it's something to do with the interior, but... I'm not 100%. But yeah, that's it, everybody. Thank you for watching this video. Please, again, go and check out the Bugo stickers. I'm having a lot of fun uh, mailing those out and seeing people with them. They are free shipping worldwide, $5 US, and I'm covering the taxes, so it's literally just $5 US for one. If you buy more than one, though, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, it saves me a little bit of money on shipping. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Hey, I got more stuff coming up. Another big advancement in the channel is coming, and it happens to be with another channel. I'll talk about that soon. I've been working on it slowly in the background. It's taken me a while. I have a bunch of videos to edit in my backlog. First time I've actually had that problem. But anyway, I'll announce that in a bit. <laughs> a bit of a bit of a preview for you guys who are sticking around late. See you again next time. Hey, 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 it's um, time to read off the names of the people who support this channel, specifically the advanced supporters. These are the channel members. They have many names. They are a group of individuals who are kind of supporting me throughout uh, this entire time of, of YouTube life, I guess. I have no idea what to say. Um, we have Overlord, QT Bear, Terry Williams, J. Vol Palms, J. Pope, Davis Hester, The German Dude, Mickey K1, Eli Mason, Sleep64, Jug, and Childish, Childish Sin. Man, stepping it up from a supporter to an advanced supporter. I appreciate it a lot. I'm, I'm incredibly thankful for you guys. You guys are really awesome. <laughs> I'll see you guys again next time.